Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk Anthony Joshua and the heavyweights. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just start by saying heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua blew it big time. And I mean big time. There is simply no reason on God's green earth why the United Kingdom shouldn't be the centerpiece of the heavyweight division. Understand I'm in America like most countries, we'd love to have um, high-profile, very successful heavyweights fight for titles on our soil, right? Great, you know, makes the fight easier to watch. It's in our time zone, right? People are getting jobs. It's building the reputation of the venues here. But understand right now, <clears throat> in 2019, I think we all know that all of those fights should be taking place in the United Kingdom. All of them. Let me point out that the United Kingdom, in my opinion, as longtime viewers here have known since at least 2015. Go back and look at the videos. In my opinion, the United Kingdom has had the best heavyweight on the planet since 2015. In my opinion, this will be remembered as his era. And that's Tyson Fury. Right? I picked him over Vladimir Klitschko for a reason. Quite frankly, if Tyson Fury doesn't have, and let's be blunt here, because all of his other problems flow from this, if he doesn't have mental health challenges, right, and for the record, many people in life do. Abraham Lincoln, look up his history, had mental health challenges. If Tyson Fury doesn't have mental health challenges, I believe we'd be several years into the reign of a guy with the boxing skills to be one of the best heavyweights in history. Right? Even now, even now, I consider Tyson Fury to be the best heavyweight and understand his career was derailed for a while. He was outside of the ring. He wasn't fighting. He wasn't eligible to fight. So even after missing out on the improvements to his game, that fighting with regularity against world-class opposition would have brought him. Even now, Fury's the kind of guy who, three fights back into a return, could absolutely dominate Deontay Wilder. I mean, dominate him. I don't see the round Wilder wins outside of the two knockdown rounds. Get jobbed by the scoring to the point where the sanctioning body the sanctioning body had to order a rematch because they understood their brand was taking a hit from the outcome of that fight. Right? Make no mistake, folks. The best heavyweight on the planet, in my opinion, is Tyson Fury. He's British. Right? Fury should be entertaining his fans, his people, right? UK people, travelers, in his home arena. Well, let me say this. Anthony Joshua, British, UK, Olympic gold medalist. The way things turn out, Joshua, who gets to the party after Fury, 
right? Beats the man Fury already beat for the heavyweight title. Right? Joshua's coming out of party. His biggest fight to date remains his victory over Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Joshua was the guy who ends up with the house that Fury built. Right? The UK had the heavyweight title. Fury blows it. Joshua inherits the building. So he's fighting in front of tens of thousands of people. Folks, you don't have crowds like that attending boxing matches in the United States. Can we be clear? Right? Let me just pivot here and say, look, I know I have a lot of patriotic Americans who follow my videos. If you disagree with anything I've said, tell us about it in the comment section of this video. The way I see it is Anthony Joshua had the opportunity, had the opportunity to force people to come to the United Kingdom to watch big boxing matches. We're in an electronic age, folks. You have things like the zone, right? Not just pay-per-view, but subscription sites. Fans would have come to you either in person to watch the fights. That's why Joshua was pulling huge crowds, right? In person to watch the fight or electronically over the internet to watch the fight. Or, if you're an old timer, using a cable service to watch the fight. Now let me just pivot here further. Right? You know, years ago in a different life, I was an economics major in college, believe it or not. And I read all these great books because I wanted a degree out of the place I attended. Right? I read all these great books with great theories on negotiation and stuff like that. And the themes were always, get every dollar you can. Right? That was always the theme. Right? You get more than the other guy. It's about you. Make that money, player. Right? Let me just say, years later, now, for example, after a lot of negotiations on behalf of clients, I realized that that advice sucked. Right? Understand, as Jim Brown put it in his book, Out of Bounds, a book I was so into, I even got myself invited to a Jim Brown party years ago. Right? The real money is off the field. The real money is out of the ring. What matters more than your ability to exploit your opponent in negotiations for a fight is the legacy and influence and reputation that that fight gives you outside of the ring. Now someone needs to sit down with Anthony Joshua and explain that to him clearly. Ask yourself, if you're a National Football League fan, NFL fan, who's a better negotiator in the NFL than Tom Brady? Right? You don't want to be Kirk Cousins getting top dollar, not even making the playoffs. Who's going to remember him in five years if he doesn't change that? <clears throat> you want to be Tom Brady. He leaves a little bit on the table. He leaves a little bit with the party he's negotiating with, his team. They spend the money on linemen. They spend the money on guys in the secondary. Tom Brady ends up in Super Bowl after Super Bowl. If you're at the mall and Kirk Cousins walks in, most of the people don't recognize him. Tom Brady walks in, everyone recognizes him 
you realize he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. In terms of legacy and influence, it's not even close. Just imagine the money that status is going to get Tom Brady down the road. Right? I'm telling you often. I'm in some negotiation on behalf of a divorce client or a litigation client. The other side is treating us like we're the hired help. And you, you know, want to say to the person, hey, are you sure you want to ignore our settlement proposal? Are you sure you want to have your client leave the room and still be paying you and, you know, still be trying to treat us like dirt knowing that I'm just going to go to trial on this and if the judge agrees with me, then we get even more money then you look even more foolish on behalf of your client. Your client starts to doubt you. He or she isn't left with the good feeling that an early settlement would give. Well, let me just say this. Anthony Joshua had a shot to really make his legacy and to do so fighting at home. Right? I'm telling you, a lot of old-timers get this. Lennox Lewis, who Anthony Joshua should be talking with several times a week because Lewis has traveled the road that Joshua's trying to travel. Right? Just to understand, Deontay Wilder wanted to come to the United Kingdom to fight Anthony Joshua. He just wanted a fair shake in the negotiations. Now, folks, it's not all about the money you get from the fight. Joshua had a clear opportunity, clear opportunity, to fight an unbeaten reigning WBC champion in front of his home fans, expand his legacy. Now, the real truth here. And it's sad that this is the blueprint that Joshua is trying to follow. Is that Joshua wants to be Vladimir Klitschko. Right down to the boxing style. Right? Joshua's trying to learn to shoot a jab. Right? He literally wants to be Klitschko. Understand, Vladimir Klitschko blew it in his career. By being too much of a heavy in negotiations for fights. Right? Vladimir Klitschko would offer an opponent a million dollars. The idea was, take the million, fight for my title. I get most of the purse. Folks, I'm just telling you, Vladimir Klitschko left a lot on the table. The Lennox Lewis's of the world, the Tom Brady's of the world, they know that. The Jim Brown's of the world, they know that. Anthony Joshua was too young. He'll figure it out in his 30s. He was too young when Deontay Wilder approached him to realize that if he fought Wilder, who the Joshua camp privately feels is an easy fight for Joshua, if he fought Wilder and got Wilder's title, he would have had all the titles. He would have been considered undisputed. Don't get me wrong. In my opinion, he still wouldn't be the best heavyweight. I don't know how you're undisputed without beating the lineal champ, but that's another story. And I don't think Joshua can beat Tyson Fury. I believe at this stage only Tyson Fury can beat Tyson Fury of the established heavyweights. Right? I'll concede. Alexander Usyk, a heavyweight who could move, has a shot on Fury. But, let me just say this. Somehow, the Joshua people thought they could lowball Wilder. <laughs> Who's the genius who thought that one up? Who's the ignoramus in the room who thought that a reigning unbeaten WBC champion in a world where there was an unbeaten lineal champion had no place else to go? Fools. So here's what happened. You might recall it. Joshua, so full of himself, 
right? So full of himself at the time. He's much humbler now because, of course, he realizes that he didn't have the leverage he thought he had. Joshua even reserved a date for a fight. Went out and said, hey, I want to fight Wilder. Now, that's all good. From time to time, I hear an opposing party wants to settle with me. Hey, I'm game. Then you show up and you get offered peanuts. Then you look around, you realize you're in a circus. Folks, you should have offered Wilder an equitable split. The money was there. Right? Lennox Lewis would have offered Wilder 40% at least to get that fight done. You know why? Because Lennox Lewis understood this is a legacy fight. How many of those do you have? I'll even go further. If you look at a guy who can give you legacy and that guy is beatable, offer him 50%. Get the fight. Get the fight. Joshua didn't get the fight. It's even worse than that. He had another Englishman, Fury, who wanted to fight him. Wow, that fight would have been huge, wouldn't it? Let me also say this too, and it's a big part of life. Older people get it. I know there's some young people watching this video saying, oh, Dwyer's crazy again. Great. Older people, a lot of them are nodding here. You want to be the kind of person who has integrity to the point where people return your calls. Even if they decide not to work with you, they return your calls because they understand you're offering value. They understand your big picture. So here you have Tyson Fury. If ever there was a time to fight Tyson Fury, it was as the Wilder talks were collapsing. Fury had been out of the ring. Fury came back. He was fighting guys in the witness protection program. I wonder whether even the sanctioning bodies knew who these guys were. Fury's rusty. He's fighting non-elite opposition. Fury wanted a shot at the belt. He's the lineal. There's another crowd out there too, boxing purists. Understand, no matter what they tell us, we're not buying the hype. We understand the lineal champion gets respect. We understand it. Joshua could have worked us over. Could have made Fury a real offer. Could have said, look, I'm a boxing fan. The lineal champion deserves respect. I don't feel like I'm the real champion until I beat the lineal champion. That's why I am offering Tyson Fury 40% of the purse. Hell, offer him 50% because you're going to get your money on the back end for an opportunity to fight him for his lineal championship. Folks, that's the kind of guy you want marrying your daughter. A dude who shows up with awareness. Who gets it. Who even with power understands he has to share power to hit higher heights. Well, Josh was too young. I don't know what else to say. He hasn't been around enough. With Wilder wanting to fight him in the UK, Joshua couldn't agree to that fight. He wasn't getting enough of a premium above 50% of the purse. Think about how stupid that is. To accept that fight. Think about where he would be today had he accepted that fight and beaten Wilder. Think about it. Think about how much more power 
he would have. Well, think about it too. Tyson Fury. Joshua doesn't take that fight. Joshua's not the lineal. Let's stop kidding ourselves. Someone can't give you the lineal title. You gotta beat the guy in the ring when the guy's still active. So along comes Dylan White. Now let me say this about Dylan White. Of all the fighters out there, and yes, I have on multiple occasions doubted some of the biggest names in boxing. Joshua. I took Klitschko over him. Canelo. I took Golovkin over. Okay, hell, Golovkin got robbed, but whatever. Um, Canelo. Right? Understand there is no fighter in the sport. None. Who has exceeded my expectations on a fight after fight basis more than Dylan White. Sir, I tip my hat to you. Right? Dylan White has been in some fights where in public I've sounded cautious. In private I thought, well, clearly Joseph Parker's going to beat this guy. In private I thought, clearly Lucas Brown is going to beat this guy. Then I see the fight and Dylan White just has far more. Far more than I anticipated. Right? He's not just beating Lucas Brown, he's punishing Lucas Brown. He's in the pocket against Joseph Parker, he's holding his own. So understand, Dylan White's a throwback. His idea, his idea of making a run at the heavyweight title means he has to beat the guys in front of him. He beats Derek Chisora once. You know what Dylan White does? There's outcry, the fight was close, he fights him again. He leaves no doubt. I know here online, I don't get an opportunity that often to talk about guys who don't have titles, who have earned my respect who I can just openly say, wow, this guy is better than I thought, period, point blank. Dylan White's one of those guys. So Dylan White is prepared, British, to fight Anthony Joshua. How many elite British guys have to step to the table and say, Joshua, let's fight, for Joshua to accept the fight? A businessman Somebody into dollars. Somebody who gets it. Jay-Z. Right? Some guy who understands money would realize the UK is the centerpiece of the heavyweight division. I got Englishman Tyson Fury, the lineal champion. I got Englishman Dylan White, who's earned a shot at the title, who I fought before. And it was spirited. Right? Think about it. You're advising Anthony Joshua. Wouldn't your thought process be, hey, we beat this guy before? He's beaten a lot of other guys since. Let's fight him again. We can beat him. We have already. He's British. He'll bring in tens of thousands of fans. No, that's not the way the Joshua people think. So Dylan White's in the negotiation with the Joshua crowd. They lowball him. They want a rematch clause. Dylan White then says, you know, I'll give him a rematch, but the rematch has to be on the same terms that you're offering me for the first fight, but we flip it. In other words, if I get X percent to fight Joshua the first time because he has the title, then if I beat Joshua, I'll fight him again. Think about it. <laughs> Dylan White's ready to fight Joshua a third time. He says, I'll fight him again. But in the rematch, he gets the X percent that you're offering me. Now, the Joshua people don't take the deal. Why wouldn't you take that deal? What position would Joshua be in if Dylan White were to beat him and take his title? Wouldn't you want a shot at 
the title again? If you're going to insult the guy you're negotiating with by offering him a lowball number, isn't it fair for that guy to say, okay, fine, but if I win the fight for the rematch, you get the same lowball offer that you're offering me now? Well, needless to say, the talks fell apart. Let's talk about returning phone calls. You're Deontay Wilder. You want to fight Anthony Joshua. You're a reigning unbeaten champion. After getting treated poorly by the Joshua people, you might not return the call. It's even worse than that. Joshua people then go public and say, hey, he's not returning our calls. Folks, that puts you lower down on the list. You mean I get treated shabbily in negotiations? Then you're going to complain in public about me not returning your calls? The Fury people pick up the phone, talk to Wilder. Wilder, who's the champion outside the ring? Let's be real. right? Wilder's vision of being heavyweight champion <laughs> is to offer to fight Joshua in the UK. It's to offer Joshua $50 million to fight him someplace else. It's to then fight the lineal champion who's unbeaten. Right? Wilder's a gamer. He gets it. So you know the rest. After being treated poorly by the Joshua people on the front end, Fury's not returning their calls now. Dylan White, looking at millions of dollars in his home country, said, forget the Joshua people. What's this about? They're lowballing me. They don't even want to accept their own lowball offer. Should I win the fight? For the third fight. So where does that leave Anthony Joshua? Folks, it leaves him in Losersville. He had abundance. Tens of thousands of people coming to his fights in his home country, the United Kingdom. He had an A-list of people who want to fight him. In fact, it's even worse than that. The coup de grace. Vladimir Klitschko is hinting at a comeback. Right? Vladimir, nobody has held a heavyweight title over the last 14 years. Longer than Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko is Joshua's signature fight. That was a great event that over-delivered. So Vladimir Klitschko wants to come back. Vladimir Klitschko doesn't want to fight Tom, Dick, and Harry. He wants to fight for the heavyweight title. Joshua has a date in April reserved already. Vladimir Klitschko understands he can't demand that the fight take place in Germany. He'll fight Joshua where Joshua wants to fight. Now, if there's ever a time to fight Vladimir Klitschko, isn't it now? When the guy is rusty? When the guy hasn't fought? When the guy was retired? You can imagine the minute you announce your retirement, a lot of people are going to hit the buffet table. Right? A lot of people are going to avoid the gym. They're going to be like, no, no, I, I spent enough of my life in the gym. Now I'm retired. Where's the golf course? Right? Where's the bingo room? Where's the beach in Hawaii? Right? Then when the guy says, man, I missed the gym. I need to get back into the mix. Don't you pop out of the bushes at that point and say, hey, fight me for the heavyweight title. <laughs> right? Is it a rusty Vladimir Klitschko, the Vladimir Klitschko you want to fight? Somehow the Joshua people blow him off. What's going on? To sum it up, and I know the Lennox Lewis's of the world, the guys who make deals, the guys who understand legacy, they're scratching their heads. How many guys who can lift Joshua's legacy to the next level? Is Joshua going to blow off? Wilder. Fury. White. Klitschko. Instead, you know who he's going to fight? 
No, he's not fighting Lennox Lewis, some other dude who can help us. No, no, no. He's fighting Miller. Absurd. Absurd. If this is the best your promoter can come up with, then I hope the fighter realizes, you know what? I need to take control of my career. Ask yourself a basic question. Who's the person the people want to see me fight? I'll just tell you, it's not Miller. Not by a long shot. Right? It's, it's just ridiculous. So, it's even worse than that. Right? This, this is one of those rolling situations. This is the car crash that you see on the road and you're like, my God, how did this happen? Joshua, the king of the UK, who had some great possible fights, lined up for the UK, who had all the leverage in the world. Think about it. If Joshua announced, I'm offering Deontay Wilder 50%, but the fight has to be here in the UK. I'm telling you members of Wilder's own family would, would be thinking that Wilder's dodging that fight if he didn't travel. Joshua could even say, look, my last fight drew 70,000 people. Right? I want us to draw another 70,000 here in the UK. Everyone would understand it. He'd be the man. Joshua's not the man. So he's traveling to the United States to fight Miller in what really is an easy fight for him. Now, I've been here bashing Joshua. I've wasted half an hour of my life doing it. Let me just say, this fight's not competitive. Miller is an obvious, straight-ahead, front-foot heavy heavyweight who isn't blessed with great punching power, who isn't blessed with great hand speed, who isn't blessed with great foot speed who doesn't have a great jab, who you know is going to try to collapse the pocket. Right? That suddenness that you saw from Alexander Povetkin, where he's outside, then boom, he's inside throwing bombs. That suddenness is missing from Miller's game. Miller's made a living being heavy, walking down guys, leaning on guys. You can't do that to Joshua. Joshua knows that he's actually a counterpuncher. Very skilled counterpuncher. The revelation in the Povetkin fight, and in my opinion it was one of Joshua's best moments, is that Joshua can shorten his punches when he needs to. Even that big right hand, and Joshua has an excellent big right hand, and Joshua has ring coverage on that big right hand. Even that big right hand, he can shorten. Right? It would be like watching Deontay Wilder with the guy jumping inside, shortening the punch. To the point where he could get it off even as the guy has collapsed the pocket. Miller is tailor-made for Joshua. Joshua shouldn't just win the fight. Joshua should win this fight by KO. Right? To beat Joshua, you need to have more of a cat and mouse game. You can't be collapsing the pocket. You can't bring the fight to Anthony Joshua. Joshua is more vulnerable when his opponent is on his back foot using lateral movement than he is when the opponent is on his front foot trying to overpower him. So, I believe Anthony Joshua wins this fight by KO. My hedge would be to simply take Joshua to win the fight. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. If Joshua gets caught up fighting on foreign soil, and he shouldn't be. Right? Joshua was an amateur who traveled around the world. I know the Olympics were in London when he won, but understand, 
there's a road to the Olympics that requires these fighters to fight internationally. Right? So, I expect Joshua to show up and to perform and to win the fight by devastating KO. But again, the risk is that Miller jumps on Joshua. Joshua is overwhelmed by being outside of the UK. Joshua gets caught or injured in the fight. If he loses the fight, you lose it all on the bet. So the bet I like is Joshua, who is talented. I can criticize his business acumen. I could criticize his business tactics. I can say here he's too young. What I will not criticize are his counterpunching skills. The reason why I feel Fury beats him is because Fury uses length and doesn't have to make himself at risk in the pocket to a counterpuncher, right? By the way, that's why it's so startling that Fury is lingering around the pocket for that 12th round against Deontay Wilder. That round has changed boxing history because if Fury just stuck a jab and ran from Wilder that last round, he wins that fight even on the scorecards of those judges. He wins that fight, he'd hold all the cards at heavyweight right now. Right? Instead, we have this situation where Joshua's business skills are so bad, he now has to cross the Atlantic after drawing 70, 80, 90,000 people to fights in the UK. Right? After alienating Wilder, who won't return his calls, Fury, who won't return his calls, and White, who won't return his calls. But this fight is a joke. Right? Of all of the heavyweights. The most tailor-made heavyweight for Anthony Joshua is Miller. Right? You need other gears in boxing. You can't just be front foot heavy relying on size. Right? Guys who require a lot of space to throw punches, that'll throw them off. Joshua has a nice short right hand. He can throw uppercuts with both hands. He actually is an excellent body puncher. That awkwardness with Joshua, where he's a bit too flat-footed, a bit too upright, a bit clumsy, not as coordinated as you think, goes away when you collapse the pocket on him. Right then, there's no decision on whether to get on the balls of his feet. Right? I like Joshua here. I'm expecting a knockout. I know both guys are run beaten. I view this almost like I view the Charles Martin fight. Right? I'm expecting Joshua to start landing. I don't think Miller makes it to the 10th round. Right? I don't think Miller is Carlos Tackham, a guy who can step outside a little bit change the angles a little bit. I think Miller gets stopped in a shorter period of time than Tackham does, Carlos Tackham. Right? But the way I'm playing it is Joshua by KO hedged with Joshua simply to win. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.